الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع الهدى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises are due to Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth And may peace and blessings be sent upon our noble prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Welcome to all of our listeners here with us this evening on the eve of October 31st in which many millions of children across North America we will find them painting their faces dressing up in costumes and going door to door collecting candy sweets and treats uh, one quarter of all the candy sold annually in the United States is purchased just for this particular uh, celebration which many kids and many individuals will participate in on this evening which is called or more commonly known as Halloween or All Hallows Eve which is in its essence a night which glorifies the shayateen glorifies satanic paganistic beliefs and actions and when we go outside we find that many of the houses in our neighborhoods are decorated with ghostly demonic satanic figures carving faces on pumpkins and putting a candle inside which is commonly known as jack-o-lanterns but the unfortunate thing amongst the Muslims in North America is that many of the Muslims are participating in what is commonly called Halloween or All Hallows Eve and this so-called celebration or holiday that people participate in is based upon paganistic satanic and evil practices and rituals where many people may think that it is an innocent going around and begging for candy but actually young children are harmed kidnapped you have pedophiles who may take advantage of children or the youth and actually in some cases or some specific areas animals are taken as well as children kidnapped and taken out to the woods and being sacrificed or killed and put forth as an offering to these devils and evil spirits that these satanic worshipers believe in and believe they will aid them in furthering their agenda throughout the world. So where did this evil celebration of All Hallows Eve or Halloween come from if we were to travel to ireland to a place called a Wienagat cave this is in ireland we would find a field with a large mound occupied by sheep and today these livestock wander freely chewing on the grass beneath their feet drinking from some of the water that accumulates in the areas from the rain however had those sheep or even us been in that same location about 2,000 years ago both us and the sheep would have been terrified by the sounds of chanting hymns summoning the dead and the evil spirits and we would have found people dressed in demonic costumes while most likely us and the sheep being sacrificed to the Celtic demons that many of them believed inhabited these nearby Owinagat cave and this place in Ireland was considered by the ancient Celts and Druids to actually be a passage between Ireland and its devil infested other world or underworld okay and the word by which the cave is actually named Owinagat right means cave of the cats okay this was actually the birthplace of the Samhain or Samhain festival which is the ancient roots of Halloween or All Hallows Eve and far from the child friendly event as many of us perceive it to be 
here in the West, right, or has it, it has been, it has become, Halloween can trace its origins to a bloody and eerie ritual marked in Rathcrogan, okay, which was a former Celtic center buried beneath the farmland of Ireland's county, Roscommon, where many humans and animals were actually sacrificed. And more than 2,000 years ago, when paganism was the dominant religion among Ireland's majority Celtic or Celtic people, it was in that place, Rathcrogan, that the new Celtic or Celtic New Year festival of Samhain, or Sowin, as they pronounce it, was born. And in the 1800s, the Samhain or Sowin tradition was brought by Irish immigrants to the United States where it was morphed or changed into the sugar overload and candy distribution, what is commonly known as today's traditional American Halloween. So the ancient Celtic, okay, the Irish, the Scottish, and the Welsh festival called Samhain is considered by historians and scholars to be the origin of what is now known as Halloween. And Samhain was the New Year's Day of the pagan Celts. It was also known as the Day of the Dead, a time when it was believed that the souls of those who had died during the year were allowed access into the land of the dead. Or it was also believed that the day that the souls of the dead mingled with the souls of the people still living upon the face of the earth. And by the 19th century, after reaching North America, many of the ancient Druids and Celts, Celtic practices were replaced by witchcraft, magic, and sorcery. As many of us who were born possibly in the 70s and 80s may be a little bit familiar with some of the witch trials that took place in some places in Connecticut and Massachusetts. So witchcraft, magic, and sorcery was practiced even here in the United States. So after these practices and these beliefs reaching North America, um, we find that they were eventually replaced by children's tricks, okay, which gave birth to the more common practice which many youth participate in on Halloween night, which is called trick or treat. Okay, so the spirits of Samhain, once believed to be wild and powerful, were now recognized as being evil. And the spiritual forces that people experienced during this festival were indeed real. But they were manifestations of Shaitan or Satan, who misled people toward the worship of false idols. And even many Christians in North America, when mingling with the Irish and Celtic immigrants, and seeing their pagan satanic practices and rituals, even many of the Christians rejected the customs associated with Halloween, including all the representations of ghosts, vampires, human skeletons, which are all symbols of the dead, and of the devil, and other malevolent and evil creatures. So it must also be mentioned, my dear listeners, that to this day, Still, many Satan worshippers, and we have many of them in North America, and specifically America, consider the evening of October 31st to be their most sacred night throughout the year. And still today, we find many devout Christians, who many of them are our neighbors, who are somewhat, as we know, Christians are somewhat near to many of the beliefs and practices of Muslims. And many of those devout Christians still continue to distance themselves from the pagan, satanic, demonic festival and celebration, which many people will participate in this evening, the night of October 31st. And they do not participate in it at all. So we as Muslims, why aren't we distancing ourselves from Satan and satanic practices and rituals when we claim to be upon the truth? And we claim to be following the pure, unchanged, unaltered revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the best 
and the last of all the messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to mankind. Why aren't we, as those who claim to be righteous and upon the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah, why aren't we teaching our children about the evils of such celebrations and practices if we are upon the truth? Did you all know that those who worship Satan, those who worship the devil, those who worship the shayateen are actually pleased and look forward to us having our children dress up in these demonic, ghostly, satanic costumes and figures. And this is stated by the founder of the Church of Satan in New York, Anton LaVey himself. He said that by dressing up, either by wearing a costume or coloring oneself for Halloween, is tantamount to worshipping the devil. He considers it praise and glorifying of Satan and all of his allies and those who work for Satan. He also said that dressing up in demonic costume signifies that you allow Satan, you allow Shaitan to own you. And he further went on to say that when you adopt the pagan practices, you subconsciously dedicate yourself to the devil and sell your soul and your mind and your heart to Satan and his allies. And his statement is corroborated by a former Satanist by the name of John Ramirez, who said that when you dress up even as an angel or a mermaid for Halloween, you give the devil the legal rights to change your identity. And Ramirez further warned that there is a much darker reality in Halloween just beyond costumes and giving out candy and trick-or-treating. Halloween is also the favorite time of year for witches or the advocates of Wicca. And Wicca is the official religion of witchcraft. Wiccan adherents believe that on the night of October 31st, the separation of physical and spiritual realities is at its thinnest and least guarded. And so, it's the best time for those who have necromantic abilities to speak to the dead. So brothers and sisters in Islam, and all of those who love righteousness, to all of our neighbors from amongst the devout Christians, and any of those who believe in the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth, we want you all to think seriously about this and realize what we are thinking and practicing in our societies before we choose to or before we facilitate for others or allow our youth to participate in Halloween and seriously think what we are doing. And hopefully when you do that, reflect and ponder, a few things may come to mind. Hopefully, number one, that according to those who worship Satan, when people dress up for Halloween, you are giving the devil the legal rights to change your identity. Number two, according to those who worship Satan, wearing a costume in celebration of Halloween signifies that you allow Satan to own you. Number three, according to those who worship Satan, when you adopt the pagan practices and rituals, you subconsciously dedicate yourself to the devil. So the Muslim, the one who submits himself to his creator, should have a distinguished identity. They should have a distinguished identity, one of a believer, a worshiper of the Creator, not a glorifier of Satan, Shaitan, and his allies. A believer should not dress up as devils, ghosts, ghouls, skeletons, witches, or the dead. And secondly, we, as those who submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shouldn't give anyone the opportunity to think that they own us, think that Satan, Shaitan or Satan owns us, as the founder of the Church of Satan thinks or the likes. We shouldn't empower them by dressing up as ghost, ghosts and ghouls and shayateen and jinn and things like this and skeletons. This empowers them and it makes them think they have influence over our minds, our bodies and souls. We should never give anybody the opportunity to think that they can't own us. 
Okay? And we should always know that only the one who can own us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us. So when we act and dress up in demonic costumes, we are empowering the worshippers of Satan and promoting their lifestyle, promoting their beliefs, promoting their practices, and imitating them, and glorifying and giving respect and honor to their evil ways of life and their evil appearances. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَن تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ That whoever resembles a people, then he is from amongst them. So my dearly beloved believers, act and dress as a believer at all times. Don't let the temptation of Satan coming in the form of candy or sweets or parties and the likes deceive you and mislead you and your family and your children into resembling the way that the Satan worshippers look and act. My dearly respected brothers and sisters and friends, our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in numerous verses in the Quran to stay far away from Satan, to stay far away from the devil, to stay far away from shaitan, and to avoid following his footsteps. Even if he adorns those footsteps for us with candy, with sweets, with free food, and the likes. And Allah tells us that we need to enter into Islam completely. And at the same time, when we enter into Islam completely, it necessitates us avoiding following the footsteps of shaitan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, udukhulu fi silmi kaffah, wa la tattabi'u khutawat shaitan, innahu lakum a'duwun mubeen. O you who believe, O you who submit themselves to Allah, O you who call yourselves Muslims and call yourselves true believers, enter into the deen of Islam completely and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Surely he is an open enemy for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us what will happen if we follow the footsteps of Shaitan. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattabi'u khutawat shaitan وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ خُطَوَاتَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ O you who believe, do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Do not follow the footsteps of the devil or shaitan. For indeed, whoever follows the footsteps of Satan should know that Satan orders one to commit shameful acts and evil deeds. So shaitan, Satan, the devil and his allies, will order people to do shameful acts and deeds. And this is why we see people vandalizing and causing mischief on the night of Halloween. This is why the police step up their police force and night watch on the night of Halloween, which many people call mischief night because people go around committing crimes, harming other people, harming children, harming the youth, putting needles and poison in candies, harming people's property, vandalizing, pranking people, and basically making fools of themselves and causing mischief in the communities they live in. So Shaitan, Satan, and his human allies, they will make people think that dressing up in demonic costumes is cute. And that begging at people's doorsteps for candy and food is fun. And bobbing for apples is cool. And playing pranks on people and vandalizing people's houses and cars is funny. Throwing toilet paper on their trees in their front yard. Or egging their cars or houses. Indeed, all of these are from the footsteps of Satan and the demonic and devilistic practices. And they are subtly designed so that even the believer will give in. He first, Satan first gives the suggestion which he makes out not to be harmful through various processes. Shaitan carries on making suggestions to the individual but at a slightly higher level of immorality. But since the process has been going on, the person does not see any sin in his actions, thus becoming ensnared 
in a lofty degree of sin. Shaitan's goal, the devil's goal, Satan's goal is to make a person perpetrate a sinful action of such a high degree that because of that sin, the person's whole life before and after him has and is ruined, placing no value to it and ultimately bringing the person down with him. Bringing the person down with shaitan, with Satan to the depths of hell. And the ultimate goal of shaitan is to make a person commit shirk and associate partners with Allah by glorifying other than Allah, by paying tribute to other than Allah, to magnifying other than Allah, and practicing the rituals and practices of shaitan and his allies. So all of these practices, beliefs and rituals go entirely against the teachings of Islam. And all praises are due to our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been blessed to know that Iman, that true faith is the foundation of Muslims and also the foundation of Islamic communities and that Tawheed Islamic monotheism is the essence of this faith and the very core of Islam and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that safeguarding our Iman, safeguarding our faith, and of this pure Tawheed from everything that is contrary to it and that can harm it, this is the primary objective of all Islamic teachings and legislations. And in order to keep the Muslim community purified of all traces of associating partners with Allah and worshipping other than Allah and worshipping Satan, the devil and shaitan and remnants of error, a continuous fight, intellectual struggle, physical struggle must be waged against all customs and practices which originate from worship of Satan and shaitan which originate from ignorance of divine guidance and in the errors of idol worship. Muslims, those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should heed this warning and refrain from copying or imitating the non-Muslims in their celebrations and especially those who worship Satan who is our clear and biggest enemy. And even if one decides to go along with the outward practices of Halloween without acknowledging the deeper significance or historical background of this custom, he or she is still guilty of indulging in this pagan satanic festival. Undoubtedly, even after hearing the truth, some Muslims will participate in Halloween and send their kids trick-or-treating and they will try to justify it by saying they are doing it merely to make their children happy. But what is the duty of a Muslim parent? What is the duty of somebody who is trying to submit to his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creator? Is it to follow the wishes of their children without question? or to mold their children within the correct Islamic framework and to mold them within the commandments of the Creator of the heavens and the earth as outlined in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Is it not the responsibility of Muslim parents to impart correct Islamic training and instruction to their children? How can this duty be performed? if? Instead of instructing the children in Islam, parents allow and encourage their children to be taught the way of those who worship Satan, Shaitan, and the, the ways of the devil worshippers and those who call upon other than Allah. If the children are taught to be proud of their Islamic heritage, they themselves will, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abstain from Halloween and other paganistic celebrations such as Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, and the likes. So Islam, the way of life and the religion of Islam is a pure religion with no need to accommodate any custom, any practice or celebration that is not part of it. Islam does not distinguish between secular and sacred as the Sharia 
the Islamic legislation must rule every aspect of our lives. So I hope that in our brief reminder today, my dearly beloved listeners, that we have established beyond doubt that the celebration of Halloween is absolutely forbidden in Islam. And as we grow closer to our Lord and gain more knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah, we will come to realize many things and questions that we should ask ourselves when we may think of letting our children go out and participate in Halloween. Number one, that Allah, He is living and everlasting. But Halloween focuses on death. Should we celebrate a holiday where people decorate their front yards with tombstones, jack-o'-lanterns, devils, ghouls, and ghosts, which are all related to death? Number two, the Quran and Sunnah are illuminating lights and remove darkness and ignorance. Is celebrating a dark holiday something that families of light should be doing? Number three, Halloween is based upon fearing other than Allah, based upon fearing demons, fearing witches, fearing ghosts, fearing the dead, fearing skeletons, scaring each other. So should we teach our children to fear someone or something other than Allah? Should we participate in parties and celebrations that has fear of other than Allah at its very roots and foundations? Number four, practicing witchcraft is clear disbelief in Islam. And it is abhorred and detested by Allah and takes someone out of the fold of Islam. So shouldn't a holiday such as Halloween that glorifies witchcraft and witches be completely avoided, shunned and boycotted and warned from? Number five, Halloween is a sacred high holiday for the Wiccans. Is this a holiday that people of faith should celebrate alongside the Wiccans, those who perform witchcraft? And lastly, but not leastly, is it actually cute when people dress their kids up like devils and witches, ghouls, or scary characters? Or is it actually demonic and pleasing to the worshippers of Satan? So my advice is that Muslim parents and parents who kill or who care for the welfare of their children, parents who love their children, parents who love to be upon righteousness, those devout Christians, those devout Jews, or all of the individuals who live in North America, who love their children and care about their children, is that they should not allow their children to go out trick-or-treating or participate in the activities of Halloween based upon a number of reasons which we previously mentioned and specifically based on some narrations of the Prophet Muhammad and some verses from the final revelation which is contained in the Quran. First and foremost, we know it is not permissible for a Muslim to scare another Muslim. As was mentioned in an authentic hadith in which on one occasion, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they said that they were traveling with the Prophet and one of the companions was sleeping. So another one of the companions who were with them grabbed the rope which the companion who was sleeping hand was tied to. And when he pulled the rope, the sleeping man became frightened. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that it is not lawful for a Muslim to scare another Muslim. So a Muslim should not hide behind doors. A Muslim should not dress up in costumes or do pranks which causes someone to be scared or causes them fright. Secondly, trick or treating has its roots in Celtic pagan satanic celebrations of Samhain. When the Druids would go from house to house and demand specific types of food, if their demands were not met, it was believed that the people in their houses would be cursed with trouble, sickness, and death, and prosperity would be promised to those who generously donated. Dressing up in costumes was done so that the spirits of the dead would not recognize people. The Druids or the, the Celtic priests 
would actually sacrifice animals and sometimes children and dress them in these animal skins and sacrifice them to their evil spirits and devils and demonic figures that they used to worship. So what about the pumpkin carving or the jack-o'-lantern? Where does this come from? So the practice of carving out pumpkins and putting a candle inside or what is called a jack-o'-lantern originated from an Irish myth about a man nicknamed Stingy Jack. According to the story, Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. And true to his name, Stingy Jack didn't want to pay for his drink. So he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin that Jack could use to buy their drinks. Once the devil did so, Jack decided to keep the money and put it into his pocket next to a silver cross, which prevented the devil from changing back into his original form. Jack eventually freed the devil, under the condition that he would not bother Jack for one year, and that should Jack die, he would not claim his soul. The next year, Jack again tricked the devil into climbing into a tree to pick a piece of fruit. While he was up in the tree, Jack carved a sign of the cross into the tree's bark so that the devil could not come down until the devil promised Jack not to bother him for ten more years. Soon after, Jack died. As the legend goes, God, as they claim, would not allow such an unsavory figure into heaven. And the devil, upset by the trick Jack had played on him, and keeping his word not to claim his soul, would not allow Jack into hell. He sent Jack off into the dark night with only a burning coal or candle or lantern to light his way. So Jack put the coal or the candle into a carved out turnip and has since been roaming the earth with it ever since. So the Irish began to refer to this ghostly figure as Jack of the Lantern and then simply Jack o' Lantern. So what about images of black cats and bats, which people decorate their houses and porches and doorsteps with? These are actually based upon false superstitions and which people believe that these animals could communicate with the spirits of the dead. And black cats were actually believed to house the souls of witches. These superstitions are clearly against the teachings of Islam and whoever believes in false superstitions is guilty of associating partners with Allah as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa alihi wa sallam he said Allahumma la tira illa tiruk wa la khayra illa khayruk wa la ilaha ghayruk So the Prophet he said before that right he said, "Men raddatu atiro an hajatihi faqad ashraka." Qalu ya Rasulullah, wa ma kafaratu dhalika? Qala yqulu Allahumma la tira illa tiruk, wa la khayra illa khayruk, wa la ilaha ghayruk. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Whoever lets tira, whoever lets superstition stop him from doing something or force him to doing something is guilty of shirk, is guilty of associating partners with Allah." subhanahu wa ta'ala so then the companion said what is the expiation for that so then the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said say this dua say oh allah there is no good except your good that there is no omens or superstitions except from you and there is no deity worthy of worship except for you so what about when we see people put their heads in a barrel full of water which is commonly known as bobbing for apples as many people may participate in Halloween parties or activities. Where does this come from? Are there any superstitions related to it? This practice also comes from the ancient Druids and pagan practices of trying to foresee the future in fortune telling, which we as Muslims know is impermissible and that only our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows the future. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever visits a fortune teller or psychic and asks him about anything, that his prayers will not be accepted for 40 nights. And in another narration, it mentions whoever visits a fortune teller or psychic and believes him has disbelieved in what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa, ala alayhi wa sallam came with. So lastly, but certainly not leastly, my dearly beloved listeners, is that our children 
must be told why we as Muslims and those who submit themselves to Allah do not celebrate Halloween or participate in Halloween parties or any of the rituals associated with Halloween. Hopefully what we mentioned is sufficient for such good Muslims as yourselves. And also we should let our children know that after sunset is the time when the devils, the shayateen, and his agents are most rampant. And this is the time when our kids should come into the house. It should not be a time when we let our kids go outside or with other friends who may want to cause mischief, especially on a night when the rest of the neighborhoods are glorifying and celebrating shaitan and his agents. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا كَانَ جُنْحُ اللَّيْلِ أَوْ أَمْسَيْتُمْ فَكُفُّ سِبْيَانَكُمْ فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْتَشِرُ هِينَ إِذٍ فَإِذَا ذَهَبَ السَّاعَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَخَلُّوهُمْ وَأَغْلُقُ الْأَبْوَابِ When the wings of night spread, or when evening comes, keep your children inside. For the devils, the shayateen, the bad jinn, they come out at that time. Then when a part of the night has passed, then you can let them go out and close the doors and mention the name of Allah. For indeed, the devil, shaitan, does not open a door which is closed when you say Bismillah. So as parents, it is our responsibility to teach our children and enjoin them with what is correct and forbid them from what is evil. And if done with wisdom and fine preaching, we will find that most children are very receptive when taught with sincerity, and especially when shown in practice the joy of their own Islamic celebrations and traditions. In this regard, we should teach them about Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. It must also be mentioned that many of us Muslims who will not participate in Halloween, who stay home, we may find people who come to our doors trick-or-treating and knocking on our doors asking for candy and treats and sweets. This is when we as Muslims should seize the opportunity to educate our neighbors about our Islamic teachings and how we should glorify and worship the Creator and not glorify and imitate and worship Satan and his evil ways. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam he said, من دعا إلى هدى كان له من الأجر مثل أجور من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أجورهم شيئا ومن دعا إلى الضلالة كان عليه من الإثم مثل أثام من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أثامهم شيئا That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says if anyone invites someone else to follow right guidance then his reward will be equivalent to those of the people who follow him without their rewards being diminished in any respect. But if someone invites someone to follow error, the sin of which sins being diminished in any respect of that account will not be reduced. So brothers and sisters in Islam, setting aside a day to celebrate evil, to celebrate darkness, to worship Satan, to dress up like Satan or witches or ghouls or ghosts and to cause fear and to celebrate death. And the demonic brings disdain to our religion, ourselves and our faith in the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Halloween is the one day a year when neighbors come to your door expecting to receive something. So at least give them Islam. Let them go home with you giving them the message of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And stop justifying why it is fine to celebrate this demonic worldly evil holiday. There are no muddled lines or gray areas about it. A committed follower of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam should never celebrate Halloween, especially during this blessed month of Rabi' al-Awwal. And finally, we must remember that we are fully accountable in front of Allah for all of our actions and deeds. And if after knowing the truth, 
we do not seize our un-Islamic practices, we risk the wrath and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah He tells us in the Quran, فَلْيَهْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبُهُمْ fitna أَوْ يُصِيبُهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Then let them beware that whoever refuses the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's orders or commands, lest a trial or tribulation or difficulties befall them, or a grievous punishment be afflicted upon them, in the hereafter. This is a serious matter, my dearly beloved believers, and not to be taken lightly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that shaitan, that Satan, that the devil is our clear enemy, so we should take him as a serious threat. As Allah He says, Inna shaitan alakum aduwum fattakhiduhu aduwa, inna ma yad'u hizbahu liyakunu min ashab is sa'ir. Surely Satan is a clear enemy for you. So really take him as an enemy. Take him as a real threat to you, your soul, your beliefs, your life, your families. He only invites his group, his followers to falsehood so that they may become the inmates and the inhabitants of the blazing fire. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah to help us stay upon the straight path and save us from all deviations and innovations that will lead us into the fires of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us to recognize our enemies that try to adorn for us misguidance in the forms of glitters, gold, candy, costumes and parties. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid all of those who love the truth and love to follow the truth to realize the harms and disadvantages of participating in the rituals associated with October 31st which is known as All Hallows Eve or Halloween. Stay away as this is glorification of shaitan and the shayateen and the devils and those who worship the devil. May Allah guide us all and continue to provide goodness for us in this world and the next. Thank you all for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.